Nathan, are you hearing me? I would like to start this evening's proceedings. Thank you. If we can all stand for the national anthem. gentlemen and welcome. My name is Carrot Sampson and I am your mistress or master of ceremonies for the afternoon. Allow me to welcome those in our midst, the Mayor of San Fernando, His Worship Alderman Junior Regrello, the Deputy Mayor, Council Vindra, sorry, Vidya Mangal Bessessa, the CEO of the San Fernando City Corporation, Mr. Indarjit Singh, um, the CEO of the Belgrove Group of Companies, Mr. Keith Belgrove and his family, fellow members of the Belgrove Group, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, pleasant afternoon. The street naming ceremony and the unveiling of Belgrove Lane could not be more fitting and at the most appropriate time. As we commence this evening's proceedings, I would like to reflect on our company's mission, which is to transform the Belgrove Group of Companies into a world-class, customer-driven, funeral solution provider, distinguished by a dynamic team of professionals continually setting standards for the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening identifies with our mission statement and speaks to our ability to continually set standards for the industry. I think we have accomplished that. So can we please have a round of applause. For those of you who are fitted with your programs, because I'm not certain that you all have, you will notice that on the program there is there isn't a time slot for anyone to speak. And I've done this so that Mr. Balgrove would get his opportunity to speak without me giving him an eye. Uh, because his story is long, uh, and we'll indulge him because today is his day. As we proceed, allow me to firstly introduce the Deputy Mayor Councillor Vidya Mangal Bissasa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies, His Worship the Mayor Alderman Junior Regrello, CEO of the San Fernando City Corporation, Mr. Indarjit Singh, and the man of the day, CEO of the Belgrove Group of Companies, Mr. Keith Belgrove. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, it's my pleasure to stand before you today and bring greetings. Um, bell grooves. What do I say? I'm sure there are more eloquent speakers to come after me who will extol the virtues of this organization, especially His Worship the Mayor, who is uh, perhaps not as well known as it should be, quite the historian in this wonderful city of ours of San Fernando. I keep telling him he needs to write a book. Um, but in the words of Marcus Aurelius, the Greek uh, emperor and philosopher, 
when I think of this company and what Mr. Belgrove's family has done, I think of the, a particular quote that is assigned to him that says, be like the cliff upon whom the waves continuously break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. And that steadfastness, that sense of security, of anchoring that Belgroves has been for this community and for this city stands out. It is my honor and my pleasure, not just as Deputy Mayor, but as the Councillor for the area, to have been part of this process in the renaming of this lane to redound in history to come so that the young ones can see the name and ask the questions and learn the history of those persons and organizations that have really shaped the face and the reality of what San Fernando is. And um, I won't take any more time. As I said, there are speakers to come after me. Again, on my own behalf as counselor, it is my honor and my pleasure to be here for such an auspicious occasion. And I want to briefly commend the leader of my council, His Worship the Mayor, for this initiative that he has now undertaken throughout the city of bringing to the fore the names of those who have written the history of our city. And one of those will be done today. Thank you so much. I thank you. Um, wonderfully said, wonderfully put. Uh, as we continue with this evening's proceedings, I would like to invite the uh, CEO of the City Corporation, Mr. Indarjit Singh, to address you now. Thank you. I express my appreciation to all for attending today's street renaming ceremony. The Municipal Corporation Act 21 of 90, Section 138, gives the Council authority to name or rename any street within its municipality. This is very important as a city like ours grows and develops, it must reflect accomplishments and heritage of its citizens and stakeholders. We feel humbled by the fact that the Belgrove family has agreed to have their prestigious name associated with the city of San Fernando in this tangible way. Ours has been and will continue to be an inclusive approach to the naming and renaming of streets through the process of an appointed committee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a small gesture of our appreciation to the Belgrose family, neighbors, and the community of San Fernando. I thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's amazing. Your paper is so small, but you said so much. I do applaud you. Thank you. This afternoon's proceedings. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, kindly indulge me as you would hear several versions or several renditions of the song today, The Impossible Dream. I would like to speak to its lyrics and please indulge me. It says, to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear the unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary, to reach the unreachable star. This is my quest, to follow the stars, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for heavenly cause. And I know if I'd only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lay peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world would be better for this, that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with the last ounce of courage to fight the unbeatable foe, to reach the unreachable star. A touching it. All right. So with that being said, and you are in that somber mood, I would ask the CEO of the Belgrove Group of Companies to now c come forward and address you. So. Good afternoon again, everybody. That, that song I've always asked Michelle Dowich to belt out for me. It is a song that touches me deep inside. It, the challenges that we have undergone to build 
what we consider a genuine profession in funeral service, the song speaks to it so closely. Even today, we face challenges, and the song, the song speaks to it in almost every single line. But so this afternoon, when we say Mistress of Ceremonies, Councillor Belgroves, Kevin Sampson, His Worship the Mayor, Alderman Junior Regalo, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Vidya Mangal Bisesa, CEO of San Fernando City Corporation, Mr. Indarjit Singh, Acting City Engineer, is, I am Mr. Bailey, and Chairwoman of the Street Naming Ceremony, Ms. Joyce Caesar. So, Ladies and gentlemen, it is first welcome to each one of you here, members of the Belgros team. Let me hear you. Oh. Members of the media, I call your name last, but you're always big in the game. Thank you again. Allow me a moment to honor my ancestors, uh, because in everything we do, we must honor those who have gone before us and the contributions they have made. You all have heard the story, and I tell it again and again, because it's, it's so significant to us. It was a slave woman, 1827, born in Barbados, that came to Trinidad, settled in San Fernando around 1867. We know she operated because we have death certificates to prove, but when she started, we were unable to prove. However, her son, just down the street here, 94 Coffee Street, August, Wednesday, August 15th, 1888. What's today, y'all? Wednesday. I thought that was significant, that Wednesday to Wednesdays. Um, and he started out there. It moved on from him to, he was my, she was my great-great-grandmother, and he, my great-grandfather, on to my father, and then on to me. There, a lot has happened almost in every one of the generations, innovations that were done that impacted funeral service even today. In my grandfather days, I talk about it, he created a system of staining coffins and caskets. It's still used by some funeral homes today. Came around to my father's era. He moved to this location in 1956, out of 94 Coffee Street. Uh, that's where I was born. And um, he did quite a lot of things. He was a tickler for quality. And he stuck for that right through. In 1956, he moved into this building, 107 Coffee Street. In 62, he purchased 109. And today we call it 107, 109 Coffee Street. And he noticed that more and more the Hindu community was demanding cremation. And it was such an onerous practice to get a cremation permit. He was involved through his, his secretary of the day, an accountant, Louis Rigsby, to write letters to get that simplified. He wasn't the only voice. There were the Hindu voice as well. And eventually that was done. He had his, his gardener start the first wooden pyre on the creek. And today that's what happened. His brother, Sidney Belgrove, created, created the first open coffin that the Hindus and Muslims use up to today. He had the foresight to ensure that two of his sons were qualified embalmers, a thing that so many other funeral homes followed. And maybe he had this customer forward, customer focus looked all along the way, I cuz, um, all along the way. and um, and. Maybe that's where I got it from to be able to start to implement some of that. He was a first to market kind of person and, and uh, it rubbed off. It definitely did rub off. That was Lionel Belgrove. A bit of contributions um, to the development of funeral service in Trinidad and of course home base is San Fernando. And, and you know, this is a tongue that nurtured us very frankly. We've gone through many mayors, and it was, it was a, a borough corporation, a city corporation, borough council, city corporation, and maybe even the days of the town council way back then. So, so, but in my era, we have done a number of things, and I'll just share some of them, because I had listed it out, and they say, you can't stand up there and talk to these people for an hour and a half. So, so, I'll share with you some of the high points this afternoon. 
Back in the early 70s, I used to sit in committees at the corporation. Um, there was ad hoc committees for planning um, Independence Day celebrations. Some of those times were people like Corey Warner, those names you will know well. Um, we went on and shortly after that I engaged the services of Michael Anthony, historian, and he researched the history of San Fernando and we aired that as a radio program, San Fernando in History, in those years. We went on and then, um, I believe it was maybe Marlene Kudre as, as CEO at the time, and, and she came around and said, you know, I want to improve my cemeteries, and I don't want to have these ugly graves causing us mosquitoes and stuff like that. And, and um, we promptly jumped in there. And we asked a friend of mine, Alvin Benjamin, whose wife Janice is here this afternoon, um, to create a design for headstones. And I'm happy to say, I still see San Fernando City using it up to now. So those were the headstones for, to allow headstones only. We, then Coffee Street went one way, and I was a big supporter of that. I, I won't stand here and lie today because it made dispatching funerals from here so easy because in those days we came right out the front door the hearse was parked where this rosewood beauty was parked and um and and remind me to tell the story of the rosewood be beauty in front there right so um it was one of the things i chopped out but when i saw them park it there i said i have to include it so the the thing about it it yes it made us easy and at that time we still did walk in processions down the street. So it was very easy to line up and get going because the traffic was a challenge at times. So I would be out there on the street playing policeman. I'll turn my back to the traffic to stop them so we could get going. But when we saw the results of that, um, and I wasn't the first to start saying make the change because Coffee Street started dying. Commerce slowed down on Coffee Street. So I joined and, and and it was a good friend of mine who came and made sure I joined. Um, Diane Sukaran made sure I joined that battle to say make the change back to dual. And today it's back to dual and it has helped with the commercial aspect on Coffee Street. We moved on from there and under Louis Homer, um, we, we seconded Louis Homer to the corporation for a month. Um, I think it was with the twin in in Martinique around that time, and he did the historic mile, um, and um, and he identified the first the location of the first Baptist church in San Fernando, right where NIB is, and we built a monument and put it up. It stands there still today. The emblem that the city corporation used, Louis Homer. I don't know if it is exact as it is today. Right here in his office, Louis Homer sat here designing that emblem and some parts of it are still in to the emblem of the city corporation today. Um, we moved on from there. Very recently we were asked by a committee to do a monument to Dr. Eric Williams on the House Promenade. We designed it. It was approved back in Florida and we sought funding. It was quite a challenge and took a long time to get it done. But we got it done, not at the original design and standard, but it's done and it stands there today. We moved on and there was the big one, the crematorium in San Fernando. The first private crematorium to be created in this country, right here in the city of San Fernando. I tell you, San Fernandians were excited. Uh, the last time at the key receiving ceremony, I said it was as if they were getting a personal gift. That's so excited was San Fernando by this. And, and the impact that had for the cemeteries of San Fernando, we would have been in a major problem today without it, without the impact of the crematorium. We then came along as well. And, and, and I remember a Mr. Boyce, we were, we were at a meeting there and I was complaining about some aspects of the cemetery. Mr. Boy said, Mr. Belgrove, go and manage your funeral home. Let me manage the cemetery. Uh, God bless his soul as well. Um, we also 
innovated rental caskets when we saw that people were continuing to buy a normal funeral service and then cremate. So there were the cost of that, we innovated rental caskets um, to be able to, to lower the cost of cremation to people. Um, people think in funeral service we, we are money we are money grabbers, but no. We, when we saw what was happening, we came up with another product to help lower cost. Then there was the Paradise Mausoleum. We approached the Catholic Church and proposed to them that we will build a modern mausoleum at the site of the chapel in Paradise Cemetery. We, um, I didn't have a chance to research the name of the architect I used for that project. We designed it, we went along, the church was quite happy. But it fell down because when we were challenged at the level of the corporation to prove ownership of that site, we could not. And as such, the project stalled. If the corporation is ever interested, I still have the drawings. They were very professionally done and they exist today. So, international awards. We have won. We have been awarded 17 times, internationally and locally, for the quality of what we do. Thank you. Those awards, especially back in London, across in the US, two, the two three different locations in the US, awarded for the creation of Orange Grove Memorial Gardens in Trin City. All of that put San Fernando on the map in this global village. And some of in those two of awards, you'll see some of them inside when we get in there. We ranked number seven worldwide, beating out so many funeral homes. <laughs> then we came to the Coffee Street Festival. My good friend, the mayor, we sat and we had a chat as to what we can do and create a Coffee Street Festival. You are the historian, sir, and you will remember the years. I don't. Um, 1995, we enlisted Ines Smith, who is here today, and we sat down and started putting this festival together. It, again, funding was quite a challenge. Something about Coffee Street businessmen giving up the money. It had to come by. And, and, um, but it came off. It came off real in good style, and we, because we thought it would be an annual affair. But I was so disappointed at the end of it that Belgos funded about 90% of the cost of it. I walked away from it after that. Um, we never got it done. But you know, it's a still can-do project. Coffee Street still need activity for waking it up. Mr. Mayor, through the skiffle bunch, you do so much. The lime up the street, do so much. But as we leave CPR Street going down, it's gone dead until it wakes up again from Lord Street beyond. Um, we can get this project going. We can get the street lighting as we talked about for Christmas. We can get that going again, but we, we need to structure and get it organized and see how many of our colleagues from Library Corner to, to Navet Road Corner that we can get on board and make this coffee street the mecca in San Fernando. We could do it. Boy, I'm so disappointed the minister of local government not here today. You know I have a pet subject. Yeah. I say this since 1999, eh? but good Lord is singing it still. I have this dream that when we get regulations, I'm saying if you know, when we get regulations in funeral service, no, we wouldn't talk of funeral industry anymore, you know. We'll talk about a profession. And it can't get there until we get licensing laws. So attorney general you have made promises. Minister of Local Government, you have made promises. Push it. I know you have a lot on your plate as you're pointing out to me so constantly. Push it. Because we have had, as we said in the past, Prime Minister Manning took it to Cabinet. After that, election to election to election. Each new government starting over. This is the time to make it happen. Let's push it. But you hear me talking about industry to profession? We could not truly become a profession in funeral service unless we raise the educational bar. So I want to talk to the University of the West Indies today. 
isn't it time we put an associate degree program together to raise the bar in funeral service? It's already in Jamaica as well. So. To the controller of customs and excise. We have written to you, and it's now three months now, we have made a request. How could we have such punitive tariff rates and the importation of funeral hearses? 65.5%. How could we grow this industry into a profession when we have such punitive rates that there are so many who could not afford to bring professional vehicles to this country. How could we stand up as truly world class? We have pointed out, professionally pointed out to you, that a funeral hearse is a special purpose goods vehicle. For the motor vehicle taxes, it is so considered. For duty, it's considered a luxury vehicle. You have committed, Madam Comptroller, that you will set up your tariff review committee to consider our request. It is now three months since you so committed, and to the best of our knowledge, that committee has not met. Could you call the committee together so that we can get proper regulations, get this thing corrected, and pay the proper tariffs on the importation of duties. We call on you, please, please give us the attention that this matter requires. Some acknowledgements. You know, in all things, we must give thanks. So, today we have the past, we have the present, and we have the future. I want to recognize some of our past people. Dave Gopal, Inez Smith, here with us today. So, we have some strong tall words. Gemma Wangdu, Gemma of the florist, who had became a great fan of Belgo's funeral home. The Benjamin family, who stood with us so strong. That award we got in Europe, the quality crown that's inside, it was her brother-in-law, we did a service for him, and he was so pleased, he recommended us. When they wrote to us to say, I said, I didn't register for anything, I threw it in the garbage. So it's some months later, he came back and said, you got so-and-so correspondence? I said, yes. So, of course, then we registered and went and had the award. So, out to our present staff, I say thank you for your loyalty and your commitment. Um, of course, I can't leave out people like Peter Mason, and I can't leave out Bernice Paris, uh, people who have been strong stalwart. Bernice was a very good friend to my father, and to myself as well. So, if only was I was a little older, wife, you'd have been in trouble. <laughs> so, present staff, you all, where you all? As usual, um, we are always scattered and could never be there um, in all in one place. To my siblings, those who contributed, Carlisle, Renault, Edmund deceased, Stephen, who is the mechanic, uh, Vinita, the seamstress, Dawn in the office, um, I say thank you. To, uh, to my current siblings, those were my siblings, to my children, my daughter Anissa, my eldest child, who on learning of it jumped on a plane and flew in. She wanted to be the first to ride a bicycle down Belgros Lane. I was building a bike, but when I saw what she was wearing, I left it behind. So I said, come ride down Belgros Lane. To my daughter Mercedes, who contributed so meaningfully to our growth. Kushin, who is into marketing and our social media man. We come to Am I leaving out my children? Uh, no, no, hold on. Uh, one little boy watching me and saying, Daddy, know my name. But anyway, so we also, we also have Krisha, my daughter, in New York. 
Krishna will call constantly with suggestion to say, Dad, you know you can do this to control the touting from any unethical funeral homes. She's always calling to give suggestions. And we have Kess, the youngest of the group. Kess is full of ideas for the future. Sometimes he will sit in our training programs and he will come up with the most unique ideas out of the mouth of babes. And my grandson sitting here watching me. Granddad, when you can call my name. <laughs> Tyler flew in last night with his mom. And they, they leave tomorrow as well. Because you know the American thing. They got to go back to work. To my wife, I need to say. I spend so much long hours out. And sometimes I sure she wonder what you're really doing. Eh? <laughs> but, but I want to thank you for that. And even when I'm home, I'm in the home office. Still away home, but away from home still. That's the nature of the work. For that patience, I want to say thank you. Dawn, I see you shaking your hand back there. Who I left out? I did see Dawn, right? Yes. Okay, I, I called everybody. But tell me, what is gratitude? What is gratitude? When I Google gratitude, let me see what it says here. I don't want it to lie on Google. Let me see if I have it still. It has always been my understanding that gratitude is the quality or attitude of being thankful. It is the readiness to show appreciation. Mr. Mayor, to you and through you to the council. And through the council to the committee that made these decisions and recommendations to you. We say a humble thank you. From all of us at Belgros, to the Belgros staff, to my family, to my siblings, and myself, we say thank you. And in humble gratitude, we thank God for making all of this possible and giving us the ability to do as we have done. I want to say thank you this afternoon. Ah, yes, yes. Thank you, Vidya. That is a Rosewood funeral hearse. Growing up as a little boy, my grandparents had this large wooden house at the corner of Keat and Prince Albert Street. And um, just opposite Dr. Um, Charles. Remember the name? Yes. And um, in the back was this garage with this big old horse-drawn carriage. And um, I would pass and look at it, and she'll always chase my grandmother, will chase me out. You'll get hurt in there and all of that. So this vehicle, the back of it was designed to match that appearance as I remembered it. The front of it was designed by the company that we had built it in the USA, and, and they simply match a design to go with the back. It took two and a half years to have it built. And that Rosewood Classic is here today. So that's the history behind it, recognizing the input of my ancestors. Thank you. My, my father, somewhere in the 60s, um, when they settled that house among themselves and all of that, got rid of it. And I searched high and low to find it. Never found it. Thank you so much, everyone. lower the mic for me because I'm shorter than he is. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you all for your contributions. Um, we are going to just pause for a bit. Um, but before I do that, I know Mr. Balgro stole a little of my thunder as I also wanted to speak to um, Anissa's ride in the bicycle. Uh, when he told me today that she wouldn't be doing it anymore, I said certainly she has become a lot more mature and wiser. So <laughs> I thank you. Uh, as we continue with this afternoon's proceedings, um, before we do the naming of the street, I would ask Michelle Dorridge to indulge us in uh, Mr. Favorite, Mr. Belgrove's favorite song, The Impossible Dream, and San Fernando and the San Fernando song, please. We can sing along, we can clap along, uh, please. Good afternoon, all. Dream, to fight the enemy. 
in the chorus of the song Jamal. Can we do a little better than that? She was awesome. Really, really awesome. And as we speak of San Fernando, allow me to introduce the mayor of San Fernando. 
His Worship Alderman Junior Regrello, sir. Uh, to dream the impossible dream. But I'm saying so in the interest of time because all the salutation was very eloquently um, said earlier on, so no need to say it again. And I first heard the impossible dream somewhere in the 1960s, sung by Matt Monroe. And every time I made those comments, the deputy mayor said, Mayor, you're exposing her age here. It has not to do with age, it has to do with interest and curiosity and appreciation for good music. But what's important about the Impossible Dream is that when that song, song was sung back in the 60s, it made it to the top of the charts. It was the number one song. It was also the most danced song in parties because Johnny Lee and the Hurricanes played it. And we all danced to that. Can't you, know, you remember Johnny Lee? Right? So we, and what's important about that era is that the, that the music had lyrical content, had value. Could you imagine that being sung today, where it would have been? However, I'm very glad to see that Keith has chosen that as the nexus for this evening's program. And um, I also want to contest or say that my, the giving of the, the awarding of the keys to the city of San Fernando and declaring the street, where goes lean, has nothing to do with my relationship or friendship with Keith. My interest in the Bell Rose group of companies um, started one morning at about 3 a.m. Um, and everybody know me well, no, I don't sleep. I was looking at the television and there was a feature on, at 3 a.m. on Bell Grove's funeral home. And they started with the whole narrative that Keith more or less outlined here this evening. And I was amazed and intrigued by, by that history, particularly when you speak about Mary Bell Grove. Only from Barbados, working on a, on a plantation, looking after the dead, and coming to Trinidad in 19, in 1866, it was 1866, and then opening this funeral home in 1888, and then looking at four generations, right, transforming an industry into one of the best, if I may say, futuristic and uh, full-service funeral home in this country. It's extremely commendable. And we as San Fernandes are very proud of the Belladores and the contribution they have made over the years. And this is where you clap. So based on that, we look at the research and as you look at San Fernando over the years, you may not know it, but most of the streets are named after governors. Governor Chacon, back in 1764, you have Governor, Governor Irving, Irving Street, Governor Freeling, Freeling Street, and mayors. Most of the streets in San Fernando named after mayors. But the landscape of San Fernando wasn't developed by politicians only, and by mayors and governors. The several persons have contributed to the development of the city. And Keith Belgrove and the Belgrove clan, right, must be recognized for their contribution. So it's on that basis that we looked and adjudicated and, do our, and we continue to do so. Recently, the, the council appointed a committee made up of Ms. Joyce Caesar, Deborah Jar Batiste, um, and Mr. David Sami, and other notable San Fernandians, to look and revisit the history of these streets from a historical perspective, not to necessarily change the names, but to understand who did what, when, why, where, how, because we need to know that. We have not really addressed the history of San Fernando over the years, and this is just the beginning of it as we move forward to understand. But the young people do not know. As we look at the development of San Fernando, the waterfront development, the Skinner Park refurbishment, our museum, we will establish our archives and the contribution of all those significant San Fernandians who came and shaped the city of San Fernando. Being a friend of Keith is very difficult, I must tell you, and I want to go into that part a little bit. Keith invited me to lunch to one day. So I said, well, where are we having this lunch? He said, at an Italian restaurant in C3. So I told the staff, I'm licking up my chops, no breakfast, I'm going to an Italian restaurant. Keith ordered grass, I ordered water, I gave me a lecture how to live healthy. <laughs> See how I could live with this, how you do that? You know? Plain water, and he had to examine, read the label, where the water came from, what he ate, and everything like that. I literally ordered grass. So I said, when I went back to the office, 
no time am I going to also keep the world. If I call and say, the mayor is not available. There's another aspect of our relationship that makes it difficult. So it's no, I mean, it's public knowledge that we are neighbors, good neighbors at that. But every day I come to the pioneer and keep is painting over the building. He is changing the aesthetics for no reason at all. Nothing like is wrong with the wall, but he put on tiles, expensive, expensive European tiles. I can't compete with that. They have the resources. But what he's doing is making a contribution and uplifting the city and making it competitive. So we all, we all in this district, should, as you raise the bar, we'll, we'll have to follow. So I want to congratulate him and congratulate the family for their contribution over the years and what they're making there. And I'm, and I'm looking at the chariot. I should call it a chariot outside there. Uh, an amazing piece of machinery. And um, continue to raise the bar, my friend, and continue to make some Fernando proud. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Um, and as we continue, um, uh, His Worship, the Mayor, um, we call it setting standards for the industry to follow. Thank you very much. Uh, so during the, we're now going to have the unveiling of the name. And uh, we are going to have uh, Michelle Dolridge again serenade us in sound. As we come to this formal part of the afternoon, we would ask after that, uh, after the unveiling, that the dignitaries join us inside and our VIP launch for refreshments. And uh, um, we can just chat a bit. Uh, Mr. Morgallo, you would be surprised. Uh, we also have, as we are doing the, as we are doing the uh, naming, um, I would like us to all share a toast. So as you go across the road and you come back, we would like to toast to that on the naming of the street. Uh, and you can proceed. The photographers will guide you as they would like it in a position that the building would be seen together with the name. So if you all will join me, please. This 
man is this man in the shot? Yes, go on to the Bible now. Yes. Those that are left behind are still beautiful and something beautiful can be made from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what are you trying to get through? Mm -hmm. The story in this room is about his awards. Yes. yes. And as he said, when well, Mr. Benjamin um, you submitted the one prayer for England, you were here at the end. He wasn't aware. No, it wasn't like that. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. He and Mercedes went on the game back and did the magazines and the pictures and yeah, went, went to London, they went to England for that. I've got that one to be secretary. Oh, you were still a secretary there? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, I know, I kind of... Let me move this one for my little bit. Allow it one time. I'm a fan of it. Allow one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. You know my son? Yeah, I know it's about that. So you meant it's not the young. It's not what you put on the arm. Restaurant. You don't get it. I learned from her. I took some advice from her. You didn't do it. Yes, tell me, tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Very right. the, the, the policy. And he was so impressed by it that he recommended us to an organization in Europe um, that give out these, these awards. awards. Whatever he presented to them, they, they considered us for innovation and customers, cost quality of customer service. And we went off to England to receive this a few years back. And they, back there, they were we so impressed by us, we featured in their newsletter the very next month. So uh, they sent down a couple of copies where I was sporting on the I, front I, I page. Hope, I hope the company prints are in the back. Yeah. <laughs> no, we put it in our suitcase. <laughs> yeah. These, these were from the National Funeral Directors Association of the USA. Always USA, it's really an international organization. I have served there since 1970s, come right up. I have served with their first international chairman for three and a half years. And when they, they have an international competition called the Pursuit of Excellence, we ranked number seven twice. We got certificates. Seven to ten work. Yeah, we rank number seven worldwide. Of all the people taking part in this competition, thousand, number seven. 
So we are going to enter it again, and we will be. Able why, to why is this situation the best kept secret? Well, and it was advertised many, many times. Um, so we're now going back into the competition to revitalize it. Just to say we did this in 19, this and, and 20, that it's a little stale now. So we, we're going to say it What does it validate my claim? Yeah. <laughs> by this, my decision making process, the way you guys will keep this with your partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Starts to, starts to prove. You also need to inform the mayor that the prime minister the time, Patrick Manning, actually came right across the skipper bunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. When it was won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He acknowledged in a very mm -hmm. significant way. Yeah. I think that would have been in 2003, 2000, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, and he had a function. And he wrote, as a matter of fact, I don't know where it is now, yeah. but his speech was a fantastic speech with regard to the contribution. You may have access to it. I don't know where it is in my yeah. old mix of things, but he spoke about the contribution pretty much like you. Um, but again, at that particular point in time. So so the the bunch of work. That, that, that yeah. actually yeah. said it too. Yeah. He was in Skiffle Bunch Yard and we had to set up everything. Yeah. 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 So this, this is the point. This is the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am amazed because really, um, with my time there, I feel something else beyond. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's just this. I'm like, you know, this week, I think. Yeah, this week, yeah, it is on Christmas of this year. We should talk about it. We're the study can't be very early because. And you said to get a garden of people, many body besides you, yeah. they pull it teeth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was amazed and disappointed uh, about the lack of partnership. At that time? Yeah. 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 We didn't get this is yeah. still yeah. the line yeah. of the wall. There's no activity 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 how effective that has been? That has been most effective. It has supported us well. Right. And uh, those who have used the, the used to shoot it up the street, the access uh, the street. Traffic is much improved. People can access the yeah, yeah, yeah. easily oh, and leave easily. So it has worked quite well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I beg your pardon? Why would you take me out to the last of the house? Good. Take me out while they're eating. Shall we are going to go get ice cream when we're done? Depending on what we have to move from the gun by schools and salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. so so this play is important still. Schools and salt. But Dave and Peter, you all know today couldn't happen without you, all right? <laughs> <laughs> And he was retired, but he's such a justice minister, of course, he knows as well. Um, as soon as they get yeah, started looking, you know, they went down the road, but they will be. Yeah, I'm Santa Cruz. And wow. Yeah, um, way deep into Santa Cruz. I just used to imagine it, but. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs>
Thank you, Gemma. Those, those are the days. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laugh